Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to It's My Lifestyle. I'm Elder Sharon Vinson and I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really, really, really thrilled that you joined us. I'm just so thankful for each of you who have shown support, who have viewed, shared, um, told someone else about the channel and just have sh shared an encouraging word or two that you have heard here. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I'm so thankful for it. I do not take it for granted. And today we've got another word for you. It's something that the Lord shared with me and I can't help but share it with you. Today, I wanna speak to you about senseless faith. Senseless faith. Now, I know that we all grew up and we had to learn our five senses. We had to learn that our eyes were for seeing and our ears were for hearing and our taste, our tongue was for tasting our nose was for smelling. We, we had to get all of that and don't forget the touch. So we had to know all of those things. And we've been led most of our lives based on these senses. You know, we get enlightened by something that we see. We say, ooh, did you see that new building going up? Did you see that new development that's being built? Did you see? We get intrigued by it. I wonder what that's going to be because we see it. And then don't forget the taste. <laughs> Remember when new ice cream came on the scene, everybody was wondering, did you get this flavor? Did you get that flavor? Come on. Or if there's a new restaurant, oh my God, you've got to try them. Their rolls, their ribs, or their whatever, because we're driven by that taste. Don't forget our hearing. Child, have you heard? Did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Sometimes good sometimes bad too but we are driven by our sensory and it has brought us this far we found out some good things and we found out so some not so good things and you know we have to learn once we come into faith that your senses can't lead you anymore you just can't be led by your senses one preacher put it this way you have to Protect your gates, your eye gate, your ear gate, you know, your mouth gate. You remember, be careful, little ears, what you hear, eyes, what you see, you know, mouth, what you say. Remember all those things? Well, all of those things come into play when, when you're in the faith because those gates are entrances into our minds, our souls, our spirit. And we have to be careful what we let in. Uh, sometimes you got to make sure just like you protect your home. You don't want just anybody just intruding. No, you protect or you might welcome people with open arms, but you protect the home. Many of you might have a security system, a watchdog, uh, and we're checking our security on our phones. We can see who's at the door and we're not even there. So we are protective in the same realm. We've got to protect what gets in our spirit, specifically when it comes to our faith. The faith factor is the one thing that the enemy knows he must attack. He must attack that faith factor. Why? Because that faith factor is going to drive you into your destiny. It's going to usher up an, in, you into a new realm of God's goodness, a new realm of his favor, a new realm of blessing. Things that he's promised to you will never get it until we are gone, driven by our faith. So we've got to protect our faith. We've got to pro we've got to guard our faith. That enemy is slick. He is slick. He will use anybody under any circumstances for any reason to attack our faith and we just can't let him do it. I'm guilty. I've let him do it before. You're guilty too. <laughs> I'm not in it by myself. I've allowed him at some point in time to attack my faith and I became a little despondent. Okay, okay. Once I got myself together, my mind back, I realized that God has been good to me. The things that God did for me before, he did them because I kept the faith. 
He didn't do it because I lost my faith. He did it because his promise is true and he knew that I was faithful. You've got to be full of God's faith. And the only way to do it, we've got to deny these senses. The enemy wants to be dri- want us, us to be driven by what we see. And if we don't see it, we don't believe it. And that's not what I heard. I heard this. Well, sometimes you've got to have eyes and can't see. You got to have ears and don't even hear. You've got to go deaf to what that devil is saying. You've got to go blind to what he's trying to show you. You have to protect it. There even comes a time we got to shut our mouth. Ooh, ooh, did I say that for real? We really have to shut our mouths and be silent at a time when we really want to say something. You know, the scripture lets us know that when the Lord, even in Isaiah, it was prophetic. How Isaiah saw the Lord being crucified in a vision and said that he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As if he was getting his uh, wool sheared and he was silent just like a lamb is silent before the shearers. And just think, Jesus knowing what was happening and what this was all for, he yet did it and he didn't open his mouth. Do you know how hard that is when we know something and we want to say it? Sometimes we want to put somebody in their place so bad, but God won't let you do it because it's not the time. Sometimes when you're going through and your faith is being tested, sometimes you've got to be silent. You've got to learn when to use that voice. Be silent in, in certain time of attack. But give God that big praise. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop thanking him. Don't stop giving him glory. Because you know it's going to happen. The very thing God showed you is coming to pass. It's not important that everybody else see it. That they see it. It's not important if they don't see it. Long as you see it. You've got to believe it. You've got to know it. You've got to get yourself together and say I don't care what they're trying to show me. The enemy will dangle things in front of you. Don't you see that? Look at that. Look at that. Look, 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 look. look at that. You got to say, devil, you are a liar. I don't even see it. I believe God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things you don't even see. Isn't that weird? Evidence is because something exists. But you may not see it. But it exists. Well, I'm here to tell devil, devil, the blessing exists. I may not be able to see it. I can't touch it, hold it yet. But it's just as real as I'm sitting here. God is going to do exactly what he says. And you've got to stay strong. Don't let your senses take you out of the will of God. Don't let your senses get you down. Don't let your senses discourage you and have you walk in the floor. Pick your head up. Pick up your lip and let God know, I believe you. I may not be able to see it, but I believe you. And that's all that matters. Something good is going to happen to you. And I'm so happy for you. I'm, it's as if I know all about it and I know nothing, but I just know God. And he's not short of his promise. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. And it's coming to pass for you. You stay strong and deny those senses. Just stand on the word of God. I believe God for you. It's going to happen. Until the next time, you be blessed and I'll see you soon.